Welcome to Everyday Polish Cooking. I'm Irena. And I'm Agnieszka. In today's special episode, we're going to show you a traditional Polish Christmas Eve, or Wigilia. We're going to show you the traditions, the foods, and all the things that make this evening so magical. We're also going to share with you why we do what we do and how we prepare it so that we can make this evening so magical. Vigilia is not just any kind of dinner. It is an event, it's an experience that captures all your senses and your tastes. It takes part, everybody comes together at Vigilia, right? Everybody has a role, we get it all together. Um, and, you know, it is the vigil that builds up anticipation and the waiting and the anticipation for the birth of Christ. So let's talk about our first course, Schledje, or herring. Hold on a second. I think you missed a couple of steps. How about that first star and a little wafer we call a Poitek? That's right. So That's the first right. star that led the shepherds, the star of Bethlehem, right, that star led everyone to the manger where, where Christ was born. And then there's that Poitek, a little bit of unleavened bread. So just a little story about the Poitek. I remember as a little girl, um, I would always get excited and wonder which framed picture would be inside this wafer. So would it be pink? Would it be blue? Would I have the Virgin you know, the Mary or the one, manger? The pink one or the blue one was usually done for the um, cattle. Give, the farmers would give it to their cattle and to their animals on the farms to wish because they want them to be healthy and give them good wishes because uh -huh. they need them. So hopefully you didn't get a pink one. <laughs> you funny. <laughs> Did you, uh, what does that one say? This one says Rados nicht So. Merry Christmas. Here you go. All right, now, Miss Jump the Gun, we can talk about our first hair, or our first course, the herring or schledge. Not everybody loves herring or schledge, and people kind of turn their noses up at it, but it's the first course. Take a little taste. We serve that with some potatoes. So let's show you a couple of the herring. We do have several kinds. We have some that are marinated in olive oil and onions and some vegetables with some dill, and then there's the herring that we have that is in vinegar. I like the vinegar. I like the vinegar. Some people like to add a little bit of sour cream to that. Of course, this is going to be to share. No one expects you to eat that much. Hey, grab some potatoes so we can show them the little tiny baby potatoes. And we'll serve that, the first course, with these little tiny baby potatoes and a little piece of that herring as your first, first course. And for our next course, we're going to serve clear beet soup or barscht. And this is what it looks like. So the two most common soups served during Christmas Eve dinner, Vigilia, are your red barscht soup, which is the beet soup, and your uh, creamy mushroom. Those are the two most common ones that I'm really, really sure of. And making beet soup the way the, traditionally it was made can be pretty complicated. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you've got to ferment the beets with some rye bread. It's got to sit there for a while. You've got to make this great vegetable broth from scratch. And although it is enjoyable if you like being in the kitchen, crazy times like this. We who's just, got time for who's that? Who's got time for that? So just as good is concentrate um, from Bacic Foods. And we just take this concentrate, we add a really, really nice vegetable broth to it, which is also commercial. And then we start to, as Agnes and I like to say, Agnieszka and I like to say, we zhuzh it up a little bit. Yeah, we do. We take these dried up mushrooms that just, look at them, they smell pretty amazing. They look they amazing. Nice, aren't they? And we rehydrate them. So we take some boiled water, we pour them in a bowl. We put a little linen cover on top of it for a few hours, and they turn into these beautiful these wonderful mushrooms. Mushrooms alive again. And, but you don't throw out that water. You're going to strain these mushrooms off and use them for something else. All that flavor from those mushrooms is in this, in this water. So when you take that, you strain them off, you reserve that water, add it to the beet botched concentrate or the beet concentrate, and add in about seven cups of um, a vegetable broth along with all that juice 
and you'll have a wonderfully tasting barsh. No one will know that you cut a little corner or that you um, bought a bottle. While we're at it, let's talk about what we're going to serve in that barsh. We're going to show you how we make the mushroom dumplings or ushka. And while we've got that floury mess going on, we'll show you how we make the piragi. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Let's talk about making those ushka or mushroom dumplings for our barsh. There's a couple different ways that you can make your dough. Some people make it with just the water and an egg and flour. I make it a little bit more. I put in two cups of flour, I put in two eggs, and I also put in about a dollop and a half of sour cream. Put in a mixer, let it get all mixed up really good. Get yourself a nice, nice, nice soft ball of dough. Like right, that. and that flour is really an estimate because you just never really know no, how you end up using a little bit more flour because sure, it's you don't kind want of sticky it to stick. and you don't want it to. Look how beautiful that is. It is very beautiful. Very and soft. I can feel it. I felt yeah. that it was soft when you did it. It's not going to feel hard when you make the pierogi or the ushka together. Yeah. yeah. So you want, you want to roll that out sure. for me and I'm going to talk about these great mushrooms. Remember those dried mushrooms that we had um, and we rehydrated when we did the beet soup and we put the water into the barsh. So with those re rehydrated mushrooms, we created this lovely fish filling for our ushka. We used some of those dried wild Polish mushrooms along with maybe some porcini or mm -hmm. some uh, baby bell. Yeah, you can get fancy. Anything you like, if you, a little bit of onion. And we cooked, chopped it pretty fine and cooked it down. I don't make it like a little tiny paste because I want to taste and chew that mushroom when I get it. So we've made this a little bit, a little bit coarser chop. We're going to do that. All right work our magic right mm -hmm. now the concept is pretty much the same as it is for pierogi it's the same dough but the cut and believe it or not when you make it that little it tastes so entirely different it does. doesn't it's it nice and you can actually taste all the flavors that are inside do you feel your dough to make sure it's the right yeah, yeah you got to feel the dough to make sure it's the right thickness you do it enough times you know which you know what it is and you just cut your circles got a few of them going and once those are done we start to fill so what nobody. are we putting inside? Oh, inside, the you dumplings. know, those, those, inside those dumplings. Like I said, those re rehydrated mushrooms. mushrooms and regular mushrooms all done. Really little bit, tiny bit um, of mushroom into that ushka. Well, you know, don't just stand there. Make yourself useful, darling. I kind of spread mine apart a little bit. Probably wise. Yeah. Fold them up. And what you've got is just this little tiny pierog with, oh, look at the mushroom sneaking out. We want to make sure we tuck all that in. And it's okay if it in. does. It's going to be okay. Yeah. None of them are perfect. And then we just fold the two ends together. And they look like what, Irenka? Little ears. They look like a little right? ear. Ushka. Little tiny ears if you look at those. Look at that. Look at that perfect little circle. Bloop. I don't want to say anything, but mine's Don't okay. make fun of mine. Mine's okay. I was never really in charge of actually making the pierogi. My job was to make sure that the pierogi floated to the top. That was when mine. When you boiled them, right? Yes. Pour them into yes. some boiling water. I wasn't sure good enough to do, to do the pierogi. Right. Well, because they would fall apart if you're inexperienced, right? They probably would, right? yes. And of course, Bob Chow would yell at me and say, sit down because you're not doing it right. Right. So after you've got several of these done, and let's, you know, maybe we can... Fix that guy. <laughs> Look at it. You got a hole he's in He's so yours. sad. Yeah, he's sad. Sad little ushka. Well, the more you do, the better you get at it. Absolutely. And once you've got a, enough of those for your family for your dinner, make sure you take and you boil a pot of, bring a pot of water to, what? Bring a pot of water to a rapid boil, throw a little bit of salt in, dump those in, and like Agnieszka said, when they float up to the top, just scoop them right out, and they're ready to serve in, the, in that barsh. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we've got this floury mess, so let's, why don't we re-knead the dough so we don't have to clean up twice, right? Right. All right, let's re-roll this dough. You've got some more there, right? I'm going to get these ushka all ready for... That's okay. Let's pull these out a little bit. So what do you use to cut the dough, to cut your dough when you make your pierogi? To cut the dough? Yeah. Uh, I, just After use you roll a, it. I just use a good old-fashioned drinking glass. Well, see, I've got 
and fancy schmancy. And I can do six to your one. So let's show them both, okay? Okay. Got some kapusta going someplace. We'll grab that. All right. We love sauerkraut. That's one of the major, um, pretty common fillers for the pierogi because we want to make it meatless. Our filling is going to be kapusta. You can do cheese, right? Yeah, you can do cheese. cheese. You can do potato. Any of those. And, you know, there are plenty of commercially um, commercial pierogi out there that are really, really great. So if this seems a little intimidating and the recipe seems overwhelming, go ahead and just buy your favorite pierogi. Just make sure you keep the meal meatless. All right, you ready? Yeah, So go ahead. show me how you do yours. All right, well, um, you know, we don't, we throw a little flour on this. Okay, so it doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. So I just take and I cut a, I do a strip. And I cut it to the length of the strip. And I just make sure that this surface is floured. And then you can just go ahead Ooh, this is still kind of warm. So use the mushroom. Okay, we'll use the, the mushroom. mushroom. And we just add to each side. Fancy schmancy. I know, right? Wow. Like, I'm moving along. But I'm gonna. you can show mm. everybody what the old-fashioned way is. If you don't want to invest in a pierogi form because you're just trying it, Agnieszka is going to show you how to do it by hand with just a juice glass or a drinking glass, right? Or coffee mug, whatever, or coffee your mug. favorite glass. Pastry cutter, right? Sure. Pastry cutter. Or a biscuit cutter, I'm sorry. All right, there's some mushrooms. So let's see, is this big enough? We're going to roll this out just a little bit. Can I have the rolling pin? Mm -hmm. All right. Lay that right on top of there. This is where the magic happens. Mm, boom. Mm. Watch this. Whoop. Look oh, at that. Wow. They're just popping out ready. at you. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Look at that. And they've got the little, it takes me forever to do mine. Yeah, see? Well, why don't you show them? All right. Here's, That's some, dough. here's some more dough for you. Don't want to waste that dough. You can work it a little bit if you start off soft enough. And there's six little pierogi for you. Getting sticky. Okay. You're sticking it up sticking there. Sticking it up. That's okay. So for my one, kind of mm. just make a little circle. This would be my... You know, I went to make it once without, after using this form for such a long time, and then I went to make pierogi that way. Yeah. And I thought, um, uh, it's, this is going to take forever. I kind of like it. It kind of reminds me of, you know, back in the day of how they it did things. It is therapeutic, but if you're doing it yeah. for Vigilia and you need to make 20 of, you know, four different varieties. But look how pretty. It is pretty. You just pinch, 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 pinch. Voila. And there you go. Again, big pot of water, rapidly boiling with salt in it. Drop those in. Not too many so they don't stick together. Bring them to a boil. When they float to the top, scoop They're them ready. up. They're ready. Okay, so let's get the put the pierogi aside because we're going to serve it later. Let's talk about the other option to serve that we have to serve with um, our beet soup or barsh. Okay, I'm going to clean this up and we'll be right back. And I have a second option to go with that barsh beet soup. Be serving some croquettes with the barsh stick. All right. So we start with a very thin pancake called a crepe. Look it's a little is. savory, not real sweet, right? No, it's savory. It's not, yeah, it's like a regular, it's not sweet at all. So what we want to do is we're going to put this filling inside that has the mushrooms, the rehydrated mushrooms. It has the onions in it. It also has the sauerkraut in there. So what we do... Just put a little bit inside. You cooked that for like forever yesterday preparing, didn't you? I did, just a little bit, but don't tell them that because then they're not going to want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you place like a thin layer right in the middle center of this crepe, right? Then you slowly fold both sides in, just like that. Just like a nalashnik, just like how we do the nalashniki, the crepes, right? Then you're going to roll and roll and hold it and roll until it looks beautiful just like this. 
Let me get this out you of You get that way. perfect little oh. swirl on the inside. Then the magic begins. We're gonna dunk it in just some eggs. Both sides. And then we are going to place it into the panko breadcrumbs. But you can use any breadcrumb oh, you want. Oh, sure, you can use whatever you want. And we flip it over, just like that. Just like that, nice and tight. Gets a little messy, but that's all right. So you want to have your skillet with some vegetable oil inside. Get you it started. It nice and hot. Nice and hot. And just place it on there for a little bit. Look how pretty that is. It's okay if it starts to fall apart a little bit, don't worry. Because once we flip it over, it's going to make its place. It'll glue itself It'll glue together. together. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're going to want to flip it over in about two minutes or so. I like to kind of flip it up and see whether I'm getting a gold crust on there, which I am. So Here, let me, me help you fork. with this. Yep. Great. All right. So we're going to kind of roll it over. And you know, I've never, I've never made these. And flip. Look how pretty. Mm -hmm. Perfect looks very yummy. It's very yummy. Let me tell you a little story about the first time I had croquettes, okay? So I was in Poland. I was a pretty young girl, and I went to um, this castle that my dad took me to, and um, they were serving, they would serve like your, you know, your staples. And they didn't have a whole restaurant there. They just would have like your soups. They would have a couple desserts. They would have some pierogi. They would have just a couple things. Well, we went in, and they had red barsh, and they served this with it, but it was um, served with meat. It was a little different, but same idea. So I remember taking a bite into it and thinking, oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> Aren't they wonderful? Yeah. So my mom used to make these during Vigilia or Christmas Eve. Look how beautiful that is. A couple more seconds. Make sure that it's nice and tight and it's staying in together. All right, I think it's ready. I'm going to place it right onto this beautiful little dish. Great combo with your barszczyk. And there you go. There's your second choice. Nice cup of or bowl of red barszcz with wonderful croquette, all meatless yep. and ready for, for your soup course for Vigilia. Absolutely. We've done our soup. We've done our appetizer with Schledge and Harry. We're going to go, when we come back, we're going to get ready for our main course for Vigilia. I can't wait. Yeah, it's good I'm stuff, so right? Yes. So far, we've showed you two courses of uh, your Vigilia dinner. We've showed you Schledge or Herring and baby potatoes, the bee soup, Barscht, and ushka, which are the mushroom dumplings, along with the wonderful croquette. And now as we strive for 12 courses, mm -hmm. 12 entrees, 12 whatever, we get to um, the main course of our Vigilia meal. 12 because? There's 12 months in a year. Or 12 or 13, 12 apostles and, and, Jesus. and Jesus. All right, so let's look at those wonderful pierogi that we made. We, made, we have um, sauerkraut and mushroom pierogi. And of course, if you don't have the time or the energy and you still want to do this vigilia, there's wonderful commercial pierogi out there that you can buy in all different types of flavors. You don't have a store that carries it near you? Just look it up online. I'm sure you'll be able to get some. But kraut and mushroom, sauerkraut and mushroom. Are a must. Are a must. Potato and cheese. Are a must. Are a must. And then, of course, my favorite, yep. cheese. Cheese, farmer's cheese. Farmer's cheese, just a little sweet, but still wonderful. I like to eat those at the end of it. Mm -hmm. And so let's start with some fish. The main, the main entree of Vigilia, fish, right? We have done some herbs, salts, pepper, some parsley, dill. Some, some dill. Flour. We took and we we're going to drench it in some flour, and then we're going to put it in some nice hot oil to fry mm -hmm. it up. All right, so we've got a piece of white fish here with some spices, salt, pepper, dill, 
um, some parsley uh, and some flour. Mm -hmm. We use white fish because that's what our family is always what we're used to. Yep. Um, and that's what we're used to. But if your family prefers salmon, you don't have to fry the fish. You can poach the salmon or broil the fish. Nothing's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that you want to make sure that you keep your meal as, um, you want to keep your meal completely meatless yes. but you also you you know think of yourself as a pescatarian somebody who only eats fish right that's what you want to think about for vigilia fish and all those things are actually um, available so this has been sitting in this oil a little bit and we're waiting for it to fry up I think I may have turned this down it's okay <laughs> Um, you know, an easy way to, to fry this is to fry this up in advance, throw it in a pan with a little bit of oil and just keep it in the oven to heat it because oh, this is a to lot do. to yeah, put out at one time. Yeah, this, this is going to take a little while. So we'll, let me show you what it looks like when it's all nicely fried up. That small pit spatula. Look how beautiful that is. Right, and just a little browned with mm -hmm. those spices coming right through. Add a little lemon on there. Yeah, and it's perfect for that main main fasting. dish. Fasting, nice fasting vigilia. Okay, so let's put this back. Let's talk about, while this is frying up, what you got going on over there. All right, so another side to go along with the main fish dish is our potato salad. So we've got some... Boiled the other potatoes. Way, the other way. Sorry, boiled <laughs> potatoes, and of course, um, carrots and peas is a staple, absolutely. And we've got the potatoes. The first thing you put in was apple, by the way. Sorry, it was apple. Okay. Some people don't put in apple; it makes it a little bit sweeter. Some people act like to put in onion. We've got some dill pickle. Add right in, and of course, your hard-boiled egg. Oh, this is starting to sizzle. All right. And then last but not least, mayonnaise and a little bit of mustard to give it that zing. Zing. <laughs> Gonna mix it together. Mix it together nicely. Get it all creamy inside. A nice garnish on top of this is um, dill again. Again, of course. Yep. Our our ever staple dill, right? Our it's favorite very friend. very colorful. Yep. And here you have it. All right, so let's potato salad. So let's show everybody what that plate would look like. What else? We've got a whole bunch of other things that we can that we can talk about here. This after you've made your beet soup or this beet salad, which is really just boiled beets that are grated, and then we add a little bit of horseradish and a little bit of sugar and a little bit of vinegar. And we'll make sure that recipe's on our Facebook page too. So let's start with that, a little bit of that, right? Gives it a little bit of color and they're so delicious. Great root vegetable, really hearty for the winter. It's a great winter feel. And then here is our ever favorite capusta. So we've taken fresh shredded cabbage and we've taken sauerkraut. Why don't you go ahead? I'm going to flip this fish. So inside here we have the mushrooms. We've got onion. We've got bay leaf. We have marjoram, salt, pepper. And again, it's meatless. So fresh and sauerkraut. That's part of the dish as well. And again, low and slow. It's those rehydrated mushrooms that we showed you earlier. We took those and chopped those up. Some fresh mushrooms, sauteed a little bit of onion but make sure that it's always meatless. And my mother always did everything in vegetable oil or olive oil mm -hmm. and no butter, right? Yep. Look how beautiful that and is. And there's... Your the fish, fish, your ripka. Yep. So we could put some pierogi on there. I like to have a little bit of a variety, a little bit of all kinds. We've got the cheese, we've got the kraut and the mushroom. And we have... This one's just the mushroom, right? Ah, uh, that's cotton mushroom. I think oh. the other one was potato and cheddar. Right. And here's your... Yeah, sticking my finger in this wouldn't be fun. There you go. And there's your fish. So as you're sitting around the table and everything's being passed around family style, that's what your plate would end up with. But we're going to show you how to 
set the table, we'll talk about some desserts and all the important things that go on that Vigilia table right when we come back. Okay. Let's start setting our table, bringing out all that delicious food. We've got that wonderful Salvatkaya Genova or vegetable salad, the delicious, delicious fish. We've got our herring and our potatoes. And our beets, or chviqua salad, and our wonderful kapusta, and those beautiful pierogi. And this is what Vigilia looks like, except we forgot about dessert. And our great Polish desserts. Can't wait to dig my fingers inside those. All right, well, bring them on out. We've got some prepared here. We've got some fantastic cheesecake with yes. farmer's cheese. And you do a great job with that cheesecake. All that farmer's cheese mm -hmm. and the creaminess and the eggs. Tell me what goes in here. So we've got some eggs. We've got some tfaruk, which is farmer's cheese. And we have graham cracker crust with powdered sugar on top. We bake it at about 350 for about an hour. And those on, recipes, Facebook page. On our Facebook page. Then we've got some makovietz, which is our poppy seed roll. Isn't that great? So your grandmother taught you how to make the poppy seed. She did. She yeah. did. She taught so me how to do it. She taught me how to do it. And well, we were living in Italy at the time and she came to visit and um, Italy's not very popular with poppy seeds. So I ended up getting three or four seasoned bottles the of the little ones. So just well, that you use for like a yep, seasoning just or for sprinkling seasoning. on yep. top like this. Yeah. Yep. And so we soaked it in some boiled water and it actually stood overnight and then it grows inside right until like then, a really cool paste. Yeah. And then you can add honey and walnuts and um, sugar. sugar and some raisins and you put it into a really nice yeast dough. Again, we'll have that recipe on Facebook as well for you. And we've got our, last but not least, our cookies. Oh. Which are everybody's favorites because you keep digging into them exactly. over and over. So we've got some kolachki, which is a sour cream cookie dough with your jams, your apricot, your cherry, your raspberry, your blueberry. Whatever you've Doesn't made matter. during the year, You can right? even fill it with your leftover um, cheesecake filling. That's sure. also good, too. That's great. Yep. Yeah. And then, of course, our gingerbread cookies. Pier or pierniki, right? made with honey and ginger and butter and just a really, really wonderful, um, wonderful cookie. All our recipes available on Everyday Polish Cooking on our Facebook page. Why don't you move that over there? Okay. All right. So let's light the let's candle. Let's light the candles. And let's break bread. So the first star's out. You ready? We're gonna break bread. Yeah. You take a piece, I take a piece. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> Irenka, I wish you health, happiness, love, all of your dreams to come true. I want you to be full of your dreams and to be super happy with your life. I love you very much. I love you too. Mwah. Thank you. I wish all the best for you. Happiness and lots and lots of inner peace. So we finished our Vigilia, our wonderful Vigilia dinner. Mm -hmm. And what do we do next? Well, we're going to sing our Polish Christmas carols, also known as Kolendy. And then it's the great time for the kids when we open our Christmas presents under the tree. We didn't get Christmas presents from Santa on Christmas Day. No, we got them on Christmas Eve. We got them on Christmas Eve or from Święty Mikołaj on December 6th. And then once we've had our, we've prepared, had our Christmas presents opened and we prepare for our wonderful walk to church for Midnight Mass. Crunching through the snow. A real Polish Christmas. Mm -hmm. We hope we've inspired you to create a wonderful Vigilia for your family. Remember, gather your family, break some bread, and have a wonderful Merry Christmas. Wesoły Świąt Bożego Narodzenia.